Good morning, and I have Joe with me today again. It's great to see you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about commercial real estate, um, and especially right now as things are changing uh, here in North Idaho, things are starting to get lifted. So tell us a little bit, Joe, about what's happening right now as the stay at home is getting lifted and um, you know, within the commercial real estate world. Sure, I'd be glad to. First of all, thank you. Good morning. Good to see you again, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm going to speak more about the businesses because commercial real estate is really valued and focused based on the underlying businesses within, for example, restaurants, hotels, assisted living, etc. Because in commercial real estate, the really the key thing is uh, cash flow. Right. And cash flow is not only important from the profitability for the owners, but most importantly from the valuation of the business. And then also from the lender perspective, being able to um, verify that the business can support uh, debt payments. So that's the transitional period that we're in right now. Meaning as businesses try to reestablish themselves, obviously their cash flow is at a reduced capacity. Somewhat because of course they've been out of business, obviously but also as they start to reestablish themselves, they're gonna be operating under reduced capacities. Mm -hmm. Maybe 30% of former capacity of being full. And a lot of that is the result of continuing social distancing and the public health rules. So recognizing that they are restricted in how fast they can go and having to take baby steps into reestablishing it. So during this transitional period, quite frankly, there's a lot of hesitation. Um, hesitation on behalf of owners to sell because they know that their businesses are going to be valued at a lower basis because they're not at a stable income situation. And then, of course, there's going to be hesitation on behalf of the lenders to lend because, same thing, they realize that it's reduced capacity and the income isn't, quote, durable, meaning stable. And then, of course, um, on... Um, on behalf of um, prospective buyers. They don't want to buy into an opportunity that's only sort of performing at a 30% rate. You know, that doesn't make sense. And so right now, this transitional period is going to be a test. I think it's going to be a test of businesses to be able to prove their ability to rebound and reestablish their business model. And with that done, then I think we'll see a more confident um, transaction stream. Uh, selling, purchasing, etc. cetera. Um, I think the economics, the fundamental economics are still pretty good. Uh, lender rates are good. And so there is still an appetite for doing deals. And I believe that um, with, I don't know what the time frame would be because I think it, it sort of depends on how you can reestablish the fundamentals of the business. But I would guess certainly within the next few months, uh, we're going to see a strong rebounding of businesses and then that will sort of renew confidence and get back to a more quote normal stream of transactions. Well, that's, that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. Yeah. I'm optimistic about that. I'm optimistic because, you know, um, obviously the, again, the, the fundamentals of our economy, the macroeconomics are solid. And so right now it's really a test of cash flow and the extent to which the businesses can reestablish themselves. Um, you know, restaurants, for example, restaurants started their, they reopened here in Coeur d'Alene and I was part of the sort of the downtown, um, uh, energy on Saturday and was delighted to see the restaurants reopening, but they're, they're only reopening right now for dining. Mm -hmm. Uh, their bars are, I think going to reopen maybe this weekend or in another two weekends, uh, primarily because it encourages more, less, more density. And so, you know, the bars, of course, are a fundamental income stream for any restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so the restaurants really aren't going to know what sort of um, cash flow and what sort of total income they can do until they're able to reestablish themselves completely. Uh, hotels, another area that I work quite a bit, of course, um, they took a tremendous hit. I mean, 80, 90 percent reduction in their revenue stream. Wow. And it's going to take a while to reestablish the travel industry, reestablish the connections, 
reestablish what to do in hotels in terms of sanitizing and distancing, et cetera. And so, you know, that segment, for example, is going is, is, is to be on its heels for some time. Yeah. Um, but then small businesses. Small businesses, I think, with the, with the macroeconomics being solid. Small businesses, I think, are going to be encouraged to continue. And that could be anything from the small retail store on Sherman Avenue right. to a sort of online kind of delivery of oils and nutrients and things of that sort. And so I think that that will um, uh, continue to show promise. And another encouraging word is, of course, is that throughout this uncertainty, by and large, tenants have been able to maintain their um, rent payments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so the last statistic I saw was about 80% of the tenants have been able to maintain their rent payments. And that not only continues the support for the owners and the landlords, but it also adds a little appeal to the sell of the buildings because there's a, a durable income stream. Mm -hmm. So a lot of pluses, a lot of pluses on the horizon. Uh, but I think the uh, baby step approach and doing it, um, of course, based on information and data will determine uh, how we can really solidify this rebound. Yeah. Well, do you have any advice for someone out there that is maybe looking for um, potential investments or looking at buying um, some advice for them right now? Um, my advice would be is to sort of plan, plan ahead. It might not be the right time, candidly, it might not be the right time to make a commitment, but it certainly is the right time to plan on um, when a commitment can be made. Right. And essentially what that means is this, if you're a buyer, then think about what sort of resources, think about what kind of uh, money you can bring to a uh, purchase. Most commercial real estate purchases uh, in all times, will require about 30 to 35 percent down so think about how you might maintain some liquidity to uh, take advantage of those opportunities another form of liquidity of course is selling being a seller and then using those proceeds via a tax deferral 1031 exchange to purchase the new uh, uh, real estate so by and large, I would say it's a great time to plan and it's a great time to think ahead and a great time to sort of position yourself to be able to uh, make those investments. Fantastic. So if someone is making, wanting to reach out to you, what are the best ways to get a hold of you right now? Yeah, actually two ways. I'm very email oriented. And so I, I'm sort of OCD about emails. And I'm not sort of OCD. I am actually. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, no, no sort of OCD on that one. At least you know. But, yeah, as a friend of mine said, well, what's the issue with OCD? I, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm OCD about emails and quite frankly, OCD about phones. So either one, and I think embedded within all my social media, Tabitha, is, is a contact of both, both of those. And so, yeah, for sure. And uh, I'll, I'll get back with you right away and, uh, you know, we can consult. Any consultation is free. I, I want to reassure people that I'm not chasing money or ambulance chasing. Mm -hmm. um, any consultation is free because we're really planning on the future right. and, and trying to create a relationship. That's all. Perfect. Leave it. Anything else to add before we uh, sign off? No, today? I think that's it. Just uh, best wishes to all on their uh, recoveries and let's continue to stay safe and uh, uh, take baby steps as we uh, learn how to operate. Perfect. Thanks so much, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Tafta. Good to see you. Enjoy your day. You too. Take care.